Welcome to class nine of beginning Tai Chi. Um, and what we're gonna start this class with is quickly running through the animal frolics again. And we told you we'd be coming back to these. And as you review them, hopefully you've been practicing them at least some as you've been working through this. As we review these again, look at how they apply to what you've learned to the form so far. So let's start with the good old bear. So feet parallel, comfortable distance apart, turning the waist back and forth, and the arms are swinging. As you do this, pour the weight into the leg you're turning towards. So when I turn to the left, my weight goes in my left leg. When I turn to the right, my weight goes in my right leg. You don't have to worry about separating 100% here. It's more important to feel that one leg is the leg you're standing on and it's drawing you towards that leg. And then you change and the qua, the waist, the hip joint that closes draws you towards the leg that you're shifting into. This is an easy thing for people to get backwards. So spend the time to figure it out. When you turn to the right, you shift to the right, your right hip joint closes. When you turn to the left, you shift to the left, your left hip joint closes. And it's really easy for people to be turning away from the leg. See what I just did here? I'm in the left and I turned away from it. And then turn away from the other leg. You want to turn towards the leg that your weight is shifting into. So if that's confusing, put the video on pause for a minute. Get in front of a mirror and watch so that you close the quad, you shift into that leg and you turn towards the outside of the leg. Then you close the other qua, you shift into that leg, and you turn towards the outside of the leg. So make sure that's what's happening, as opposed to turning away from the leg, turning towards the inside of the leg you're standing on. Really get yourself feeling that. And then when you've got that, check all the posture points. Rear crown of the head suspended. Tripod in each foot connected to the ground, even as the weight shifts in and out of a foot. Mind resting in the Dantian, two fingers below the belly button, roughly halfway in, your center. Hands moving through the air as if it had the substance of water. And everything relaxing. Another couple swings. Great. The tiger, nimble footwork, and the parts of the foot. So remember, you're going to step out with a foot, empty, heel first, no weight in it. Then the foot rolls on the ground, all your weight shifts there. The rear foot comes in and touches on the ball. And then you shift your weight 100% from one foot to the other. So really pay attention to the footwork shifts. And then the arms do their thing. And the main thing to pay attention to now is that the motion of the arms is coordinated with the motion in the legs. So go ahead, starting to the left. Everything forward, pour the weight from one foot to the other and back. To the right, everything forward, pour the weight from one foot to the other. So feel this coordinated. Make sure you're taking small steps. If you take big steps, it'll be difficult to have these nice, crisp, clean weight shifts. So a small step, 100% of the weight, 100% of the weight. Zero in the front foot, all the weight in the front foot, all the weight in the back foot. So you're working on your shifting, your stepping, and making it be easy. arms are coordinated. So as you reach the front foot, your hands are rounded fists. As you settle in the back, the claws open up. So this all happens together. Continuing to breathe, 
Watch if you find yourself holding the breath and relax. Nice and easy. Once more on each side. The monkey, the monkey gets you a couple things. It's another 100%, right? You step out with the foot empty and then all your weight goes forward and the rear foot comes in and touches without putting any weight in it. So you're gonna be practicing your stepping again. You're also gonna look at how you shift when you shift, you sit down to put the front foot on the ground. It feels as if the weight shifts underground and then it comes up the front foot, which at the last minute moves the rear foot. And then finally, you've got your cross balance. So as the f one leg fills, the other hand is also full. So there's a line that we call it the line of stability that goes from the front leg that you're standing in all the way to the opposite hand. And when you do this, this line from my hand to my foot makes me totally stable so that I can do anything I want with the rest of my body. If instead I did it with the same side hand and the same side foot, the rest of moving the rest of the body around is gonna make me less stable. So really feel that line of stability, one foot to the opposite hand. And this will, you know, drink a cup of tea, do whatever you want, read the newspaper. You've got this solid. So that cross balance is really important. So the monkey, step out with one foot. The other hand is ready. Underground, up the front leg, line of stability. Move the rear hand as you grab the peach and back. Out with the other foot. Other opposite hand is ready. Line of stability, grab the peach and back. Step empty, shift underground, up the front leg, rear foot steps in just as you grab the peach and back. Step empty, shift underground, up the front leg, rear foot touches just as you grab the peach. Once more on each side, step out. You've got the opposite hand ready, shift underground, come up the front foot, line of stability, grab the peach, rear foot touches. Step out, empty, opposite hand ready, shift underground, up the front leg, line of stability, rear foot touches down just as you grab the peach. Great. The deer, the deer gives us this chance to work on our 70-30s. So making sure when you step out for a 70-30, you step out with the foot empty, so you don't step so far that you're forced to put weight into it. You step out so that you have length, you're stepping forward, and also width, you're stepping slightly to the side. And that when you get in the 70-30, your two feet are angled, rear foot's at 30 to 45 degrees relative to the front, the waist is right square to the front, and the front thigh is pointed right along the toes. So. The deer gathering, display your antlers, little deer smile, bring everything back in. Gather, display your antlers, deer smile. And go ahead and watch the motion go through the body from the rear foot up through the leg, torso, arms, fingers, and beyond. Remembering to breathe. You'll tend to breathe in as you come forward and breathe out as you come back. Most important is breathing. Everything starts together and finishes together. So you're gathering just as the foot goes down. 
You're shifting and turning all the way till the fingers open up. So it's one motion that plays out through the whole body. Everything starts together, everything finishes together. Once more on each side. Great. Now I taught you a new crane animal frolic the last time, so we're going to do it here. Start with your feet in the V. Take your left hand and put it in your right elbow. Bend your knees as you stand up. The hands separate. The foot that goes with the bottom hand steps out, touches with the ball, no weight. Bring everything back in. Top hand goes into the opposite elbow. Expanding, spreading the wings, foot steps out. Top hand goes into opposite elbow. Shift the weight, expand, wings open and back. So really feel the roundness in the wings as you do this. And watch for which foot you're stepping out with. It's really easy to step with the foot that goes with the high hand, but it's the foot that goes with the low hand that steps. The elbow hand drops, that foot steps out, the other hand goes up, the high hand comes back to the elbow. The elbow hand drops, that foot steps out, the wings spread, high hand into the elbow. White crane spreads its wings, standing at the edge of the abyss, no weight in the front foot. Breathing in and expanding, breathing out as everything comes back in. Awareness expands, awareness focuses in the center. Body opens, body closes. Okay, once more on each side. And then the first crane that we taught you. And so really try to put this all together. In this one, as the body opens, your awareness fills the whole room and the air comes in. As the body closes, your awareness focuses down in your center and the air goes out. So go ahead. Step out empty, you shift underground, you come up the front leg, everything finishes, you close, you shift underground into the back leg. Everything starts and finishes together. Wings spread just as you finish standing up on the front leg. Foot comes back just as your wings drop. Opening, awareness, expanding, breathing in, closing, breathing out. Focusing in your center. Easy, relaxed, soft. Okay, once more on each side. and take a break. So those should feel a lot different than they did nine classes ago. And you should start to be starting to see how what we do in the animal frolics is really the same thing as what we do in the Tai Chi form. Tai Chi form is more complex, it works the body more, it's got more challenging moves for you to try to apply the Tai Chi principles in. The animal frolics exercise all the same things they don't show you all the depth of it the same way. But once you've got that from working on the form, it's really good to come back to the animal frolics and look at the, all the stuff in there. So that's why we started with those today. 
Let's do the forearm up through white crane a couple times. Try to keep the same feeling you just had while we were doing the animal frolics. Relaxed, easy. Separating the weight, turning the waist. Body upright, beautiful lady's hands. And go ahead. And again, and when we do this next form, try to keep yourself as relaxed as possible. No striving, no efforting, everything soft. Totally soft and relaxed. And go ahead. Let it be easy. All body is soft. Everything relaxed. So soft, so relaxed, you don't even disturb the air. Take a break. So one of the key things about relax is mind in Dantian. So having your mind rest in your center, the Dantian, two fingers below the belly button halfway in, it's your center of gravity when you're standing upright. Um, it's your 
center of energy, center of your awareness. So rather than having your mind chatter, 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 and worry about things, and rather than trying to be like you're in a video game simulation where you're controlling all the parts of your avatar, go ahead and really experience it from your center. So stand here just for a second and try to really feel down in your belly. So you're not in the head looking down. Really feel the stomach, the abdomen, and try to feel that you're there. And when we do the bear, we talk about watching the movement happening around your center. You really want to get a tangible feeling of your center and being in there. So let's do the form another time. And when we do it this time, try to keep mind in Dantian. Don't worry so much about what the hands and feet are doing. Just really try to stay there in the center. And what will happen is you will get distracted. And so that's totally okay. You'll be doing something. We'll be doing one of the complicated moves. We'll be doing the next move that you just learned. And you'll be thinking, okay, what do I do? I turn my waist, I move my hands, I move my foot. That's totally okay. You'll be working on single whip and you'll get across here and you'll think, oh no, I got that giant step. And all of a sudden you're out of the Dantian. That's just fine. But notice, notice when you leave that feeling of centered awareness of the mind peaceful and calm in the Dantian and come back to it. So when you think, oh my God, this giant step, that's okay. But then say, oh yeah, right, mind in Dantian. Ah, nice and easy single whip. So keep coming back to it. One more time. Letting the mind rest in the Dantian. And go ahead. If you get distracted, return to mind in Dantian. Watching the movement from your center. Mind in the Dantian, nice and easy. Great. Okay, let's real briefly review how we get from shoulder strike into white crane. Um, I'll do it so you can see me once and talk through the details, right? You remember from lift hands, we brought the hands back, the foot came back, we stepped back out, our feet are at 90 degrees, and we shift into shoulder strike. So in shoulder strike, your waist won't be exactly towards the front foot, because it's just not physically possible. If I wanted to get it towards the front foot, watch what I have to do. I have to turn the rear foot and get more width. So you're not going to have that. But at the same time, I'm not just over there someplace. I'm actually aware of where I'm going. So drop into your front foot and then turn to the left. As you do that, the two hands separate and the empty rear foot comes in touching on the ball. So take that again from shoulder strike. Start out, make sure your feet are at 90 degrees to each other. Make sure, I'll face the camera for this, make sure that the front foot is like an L, not a T. So when I bring my front foot back, it comes back here alongside my rear foot. It doesn't drop right into the rear foot. 
So start out with a good shoulder strike, feet at 90 degrees, either zero to half shoulder wide. Right arm is long, just hanging there. This is the elephant's trunk. Left hand is palm down, fingers by right elbow. Eyes watching front, gaze in the direction you're going. Shift all your weight into the right leg. Turn to the left as you do that. The two hands separate and you move your rear foot. Everything arrives together. Do that again, back to shoulder strike. 90 degrees, like an L, not a T. Eyes watching front, left palm down by right elbow, right arm long like the elephant's trunk. All the weight into the right foot. Turn to the left as you do that, the hands separate. Everything arrives together. The hands finish just as the left foot touches down. Look at this final posture here. My right hand is by my temple and the palm is out slightly. I'm not trying to turn it up where it would become difficult and not relaxed, but it's not just hanging there. It's not like a salute, it's actually open. The left hand has come across my left thigh. It's sitting here at the side. The two hands separated like spreading my wings. All my weight is in the back foot. The left foot is touching on the ball, but no weight in it. Again, from shoulder strike. All the weight forward, turn the waist to the left, arms separate, everything finishes together. And now the really important thing here is that you keep your front foot even on the ground. Don't let it roll as you do this. See rolling here. And look what happened to my poor little knee. Um, you will not be happy if you do this very much at all. So when I come from shoulder strike and I turn, my knee stays exactly that same direction. It doesn't come with me at all. So let that be limiting. Limits are good for us in Tai Chi. When I do this, look how my waist is still to the corner. I can't get my waist all the way around to the same direction as the front without losing my rear knee. And in order, to, I had to change my weight because otherwise I'll hurt my knee. So let the waist only go as far as it does. The knee is more important, but then send your awareness the direction that you're facing towards the left. Okay, so uh, let's do that twice more and then I'll turn it over to Beth and she'll teach you what's next. So from shoulder strike, 90 degrees, feet like an L, not a T, most of your weight in the right leg, Right arm is long, the elephant's trunk. Left palm down, fingers by right elbow. Shift all your weight forward. Make sure the right knee's still going where your right toes are. Open to the left, spread your wings. Waist is gonna be to the corner. Right knee did not come with me. It's still pointed the way the toes are. And again, back to shoulder strike. Shoulder strike, long elephant's arm in the right. Right trunk. Left palm down, fingers by right elbow. Leg, feet like an L, not a T. Right knee pointed where the right toes are. Most of your weight in the right leg. All your weight in the right leg. Turn to the left, spread your wings. Step with the left foot. Great. Okay, so um, time to learn a new move. We gotta keep going. So here's Beth with the next one. Okay, let's do the whole form up to white crane spreads wings and uh, we'll see what comes next. And begin. The opening move. Word off left.
Word of fright. Roll back. Press. Push. Single whip. Lifting hands. Shoulder strike. White crane spreads wings. Drop your right hand, turn the waist to the right, right arm swings up, left hand drops, rear hand folds, step, left foot steps, brush knee. Gather into the left leg, gather into the right leg, stretching the rubber band, releasing the rubber band, play guitar. Turn, arm swings, front arm drops, rear hand folds, left foot steps, shift, brush knee again. Rest your legs. So now you see the method to our madness. That was the last uh, form sequence that we've been working on with you. So that's the way it works. There are two brush knees. The first one comes after um, white crane, and then we roll into that whole sequence and do uh, play guitar and another brush knee. So now you've got another little jump in the form and there's just a little bit left. So let's do it again. Begin. Breathing and relaxing. White crane spreads wings. Keep the weight in your right leg. Right hand drops, waist turns. Left hand follows. Left hand drops, right hand folds. Left foot steps, waist is still in the corner. Shift to the left leg and 
Fresh knee. Gather all the weight into your left leg. Right foot comes up. Replace it. Stretch the rubber band. Release the rubber band. Turn. Right arm swings. Front hand drops. Rear hand folds. Left foot steps. Shift. And brush knee again. Great. So let's just go over some of those last moves um, from single whip. That's kind of the, um, a new little segment in there that we can take all the way up to uh, the second brush knee. So let's do it again and um, we'll stop at each of the postures. Take it from single whip. So as you stand here, feel comfortable in your 70-30. Get your waist square to the front. That means your belly button, your knee, and your toe of your left foot are all facing the same direction, straight ahead. Get your left arm up comfortably, easily. You want to release any tension in your shoulder so that you don't bring it up from the shoulder, leave the shoulder relaxed, and let the hand come up without pulling on your shoulder. And the right arm, same thing, let it swing, come up into the hook, get it so that it's comfortable, and Begin all the weight into your left leg. Turn to the right. Right hook opens. Hugging a big tree. Hugging a small tree. Feel up to your fingertips. Hands drop. Palms face each other. Right foot comes in by your left ankle. Step back out like an L, not a T. As you begin to shift, your right arm stays long like an elephant's trunk. Your left hand comes in by your right elbow. Shouldering. Next one, all the weight into your right leg, turning the waist, hands separate, left foot comes in, and white crane spreads wings. Let your right hand drop. It drops with the pinky side leading, so it's like aerodynamic, cutting through the air. Your waist turns, your left arm swings in front of you, your right arm swings out beside you. Right hand uh, left hand drops, right hand folds, left foot steps. You're still facing the corner. Begin to shift. More weight in your left leg. Turn in back foot, and on tien. This is the first brush knee. All the weight into your left leg, releasing the right. Replace it and shift. Stretch the rubber band, release the rubber band. Let the empty foot relax to the ground, but it still doesn't have weight. Drop the right hand, turn the waist. Front hand drops, rear hand folds, left foot steps, shift. More weight in your left leg. Complete the posture. Second brush knee. Okay, and rest your legs. When I do these facing you, Lee will keep giving you the same image that, you know, the way that you're facing, but I want you to see the hands and what's happening as we transition. So um, let's take it from shouldering. Actually, I'm going to turn this way so that you can see me. Okay, into the right leg. Spread your wings. White crane. Right hand drops. P 
pinky side leads, so it's sort of slicing through the air. Watch how the left hand just follows the turning of the waist. And when I get to the, the completion of my turn, my right hand is like a ward, left hand is like a ward off in front of my chest. Left hand drops, right hand folds, left foot steps, still in the corner, shift, get more weight into your left leg, complete the move, first brush knee. Gather all the weight into your left leg, right foot releases, step back, gather all the weight into your right foot, turning the waist a little bit to stretch the rubber band, and then release the rubber band. Now your feet are in this 100% position where you've got your L. My L is a little bent, but the idea of the two heels being um, able to pass each other is still true. So this is play guitar. Stay in your right leg. You can let the, the, the foot, left foot is resting on the heel. You can just let it relax to the ground. Turn, your right arm swings up. Front arm drops, rear hand folds, left foot steps. You're facing the corner, get weight into your left leg, complete the move. Rest your legs. So there's a lot going on in this part of the form. Um, I want to take it from White Crane and point out something that's really true all over the place, but I think it's really um, kind of neat and uh, clarifying to see how it works in White Crane, which is that it's the turning of the waist that really makes everything come together. So when I go from shouldering to white crane, in reality, my hands are just doing this. And it's the turning of the waist that gives the move um, the look that it has. Um, but it's not something where I, my arms are coming up and I turn and then I bring it all in. It's just like spreading your wings. It's exactly this little exercise that we were doing where you're just spreading your wings. They come right up your center line and it's your body that does the turning. So from shoulder strike, you put all your weight into your right leg and just think about your arms coming right up your center and then you turn and that's what brings your left hand to the left side of your left thigh and brings your right hand up. So it's this really nice feeling, rest your legs, that you don't have to do the arms. I'm not busy go trying to find, uh, oh yeah, my arms have to be here. I'm just doing this and everything else happens because of the turning of the waist. And so now that you have become aware of this, you can look at it all over the place, that it's the turning of the waist that drives the arms into a position rather than a manipulation of arms to put them where they're supposed to go. So let's do it again from, we'll just start at shoulder strike. So remember, feet in an L, 90 degrees, more weight in your front leg, releasing your rear leg, long right arm, left arm in by your elbow, palm down. All the way into the right leg, your wings spread right up in front of your center line, you turn and end up white crane spreads wings. Let your right hand drop. Let the left hand be activated because you're turning your waist. And when you get to the corner, your, both your arms have uh, swung into place. Front hand drops, palm down. Rear hand folds, leading with the fingertips. Left foot steps. Now you got this kind of a shape. Shift, 
get into your left leg more, and then turn in back foot and dantian, and that brings your hands into position. Your left hand will be beside your left thigh. Your right hand is just like push, like when we were in push, but now it's just the one hand. Gather all the weight into the left leg. Replace the right foot, stretch the rubber band, and release it. Turn, right arm swings, front hand drops, rear hand folds, left foot steps, waist is still in the corner, begin to shift, and complete the move. Rest your legs. So some more details about this um, sequence that we've been doing with you for quite a while now that we finally have uh, tucked into the rest of the form. So from here, the right hand can just drop. Think about this part of the hand kind of slicing through the air and the whole body turns as it hits bottom and starts to swing back up. The left hand comes into a place where it rises a little bit so that it's in front of the center of your chest. That's why I said it's like a ward off. It's got this kind of a shape. So the two hands, I'm not just waiting around with this one, drop this hand and then bring this one up. They move together, but this one doesn't have nearly as far to go as this one does. So you just let things start moving because everything starts together, everything ends together, but they have different paths that they have to take. So just do this much with me a few times. And as Lee is pointing out, your left hand doesn't come across your body and it doesn't stay out here. It's protective. It's got this ward off quality where the palm is facing the center of your chest. And when you stop in this place, if you were to get out of the posture, look at where your swinging up arm is. It's not back here. It can be very tempting to see that when I do this, my fingers are pointing to the corner. And so it may seem like what I'm doing is reaching with my arm to the corner. But that's just, um, when you, as you develop your Taiji vision, your Taiji eyes, you will be able to see that in fact, it's not my arm that goes out there, it's the body. So it's the same thing that we were just looking at with White Crane, how it's the turning of the body that puts the arms in their final place. Same thing here. This space here is not reaching. You're not reaching for a corner with your arm. So go ahead and do that one so that you really feel what it feels like when you pull your shoulder socket and reach behind yourself. We don't want to do that. So let go of that, let it soften and, and get comfortable again. And what you want to do, and you could even do this, is put your left hand across the, the joint here. And as you turn, let your arm swing up so that it doesn't pull away. It swings all the way out, but then go ahead and reach and feel what that feels like. And then bring it back to the place that's in your... Uh, vicinity. You know, you're not reaching outside of the space that's yours. You're actually turning here to get it into that, that place. So there's no place you're putting your hands. What you're doing is turning the waist as much as you can without losing all the other stuff. Relax, keeping the weight, you know. I could say, well, if I put more weight into this leg, I'll turn a lot more. So it's not how much you turn, it's how you 
uh, make the turn happen. So it has to happen on one leg. So don't worry about how far you turn. If you're not turning as far as Lee and I do, well, I, that's to be expected. But turn as far as you turn without having things get distorted. You don't want the, back, the foot that you're on to roll, as Lee was showing you about how when the foot rolls, the knee starts falling in and that creates problems. So you're just turning as much as you can turn and your arm is swinging up both arms actually are swinging up gently. Your nose stays with your belly button. Your left hand is right in front of your, the center of your chest. And the right hand, you can, if you keep your, your vision with your nose and belly button, you should be able to see your fingers if you wiggle them in your periphery. If you reach, go ahead and do that and see that now you can't see it. So that's a clue, an external clue that you've taken yourself out of your space. So make sure that it's, it's fully extended, it's open, the elbows aren't locked, but it's not um, uncomfortable. Then at this point, you're gonna drop the front hand palm down and let the rear hand fold over. So we got just this sort of a shape. Coming from here, front hand drops right in front of you and the rear hand folds over so that we get this kind of a relationship with the two hands. It's almost like there's this invisible string between your two hands. And when this one starts dropping, kind of brings this one up and over with it. And before everything finishes, you also step out, heel first, no weight, and then begin to shift. So you're sitting down, getting more weight into your left leg. When you have more weight in your left leg, you should still have turn left. It's the turn that drives your front arm into the push place and that takes your left arm over your leg and brushes your knee. In reality, we brush our thighs, but the name of the move is brush knee, so that's what we call it. So let's do it again from um, shoulder strike so that we can get ourselves into white crane before moving on. Okay, all the weight into your right leg. Spread your wings, turn the waist, left foot comes in. Drop the right hand, turn. Arms swing. Front hand drops, rear hand folds, left foot steps, shift, complete the move, turn the waist, hands come into final position. Rest your legs. Please reminding me, rear foot on heel. So when you come into this final posture, you've, uh, let's see, we're here. The rear foot always turns on the heel. So make sure that you don't neglect that. There, you're, you don't want to just leave it behind. That's going to feel awful. And you don't want to just turn it somehow where the whole foot just slid. So the difference between heel, ball, toe is um, actually makes a difference. When we step out for a 70-30, always you step heel first without committing your weight to it. This is important. Do the best that you can. It may mean that you take a smaller step than you think you should, but there's no reason to take a step that you cannot um, move easily from. And so this idea that you step heel first without committing the weight yet is an important part of Tai Chi. And then you're going to let that foot come onto the ground and as the beginning of the shift. And you've got to wait until you have enough weight in this leg that you can let go of this one so that when you complete the move, you can turn on the heel. If you find that you're having trouble 
getting into the final posture. I'm here, and then I go to turn, and it's hard. It's taking effort to get this leg to turn around. You want to release that leg a little bit so that you can turn it. If you're still using it to hold you up, it's going to hold you back. So that's something that um, you can keep looking for as a diagnostic for what's going on. Front hand drops, rear hand folds, left foot steps, heel first, no weight. Begin to shift, let that foot come down on the ground. Get the left foot ready to hold you. Once it can hold you, now you'll be able to turn the back foot on the heel smoothly and um, not feel like it's a big effort to get it to turn. So then we've got brush knee. The brush knee, the final posture is the same, whether it's number one or number two. The next move, you're going to sit down into your front leg. Our teacher Jane called this moment being like a pelican on a post. So you're upright. This is not something where I'm leaning forward to pick that foot up. Remember, body upright. So just sit down and be like a pelican on a post. Then you replace this foot. It goes down at an angle. The ball touches the ground first because now it's behind. So when we go forward, it's always heel first. When you put your foot down behind you, it'll go down on the toes and ball. And then sit into that leg and turn the waist a little bit. And that's the moment that we call stretch the rubber band. So it's the rubber band is down around your left foot and around both your hands. And it's not that I'm stretching the rubber band, it's that I'm turning the waist to make that happen. So it's this action that draws the hands into the stretched place, not this action where it's just the arms. So again, this is back to where we started here, where the turning of the waist is what's going to draw the hands into the place that you want them to go to. So from the first brush knee, gathering down into your left leg, pelican on a post. Replace your right foot, ball goes down first, shift onto it, and as you do that, you can turn your waist and let that take your hands apart, and that's the stretch the rubber band moment. Now, release the rubber band, it will turn you part way back toward the front, and bring your hands into position. This is the final posture. This posture is called play guitar. Actually, it's called play Chinese in stringed instrument called a pipa, but we turned it into play guitar when it came to the United States. So you're resting on the heel of your foot, the left foot, it's empty. At this point, because you've stepped back with the ball facing the corner, you no longer have to keep your feet at 90 degrees. There's still, I'm still not coming square around to the front. There's still a little bit of a um, offset going on. My hands are pointing straight ahead, but I'm not trying to make myself be square to the front. I let there be a slight um, turn away from the front. The weight stays in your back leg. So even though it's on the heel, you don't want to put weight there. Just let it rest. An empty leg in these 100% postures, whether it's white crane and it's on the ball or play guitar and it's on the heel, an empty leg should always have a slight bend in the knee. So that will help you unweight the foot so that the foot can sit lightly on the ground and all the weight can stay in your right leg. The right palm is relating to the left elbow. So this is an awful lot like lifting hands. Now we're doing it on the other side and it's play guitar. You can let the foot down as you go to turn. 
because if you keep it up, there's nothing wrong with keeping it up, but it tends to keep some tension down at your foot. So go ahead and allow the foot to relax to the ground, but don't, that doesn't mean that you put your weight there. Keep the weight in the right leg. Turn. So this has pretty much the same quality as the other one um, uh, coming out of White Crane. The only difference is your left hand is already up here. Left hand drops, right hand folds, left foot steps, heel first, no weight. Shift. Make sure you get your weight so that the left leg can hold you. And as you complete the move, if you need to, the foot turns in on the heel. I say if you need to, go ahead and rest your legs because if when you come out of this moment and step back, it's possible that where you put this foot will be exactly where you want it to be when you've done all of this and there's no need to turn it in. But um, if it's not in the right place, turn it in. I, I'd say I'd turn it in maybe half the time. So just remember, the feeling is what you're going for. So take a 70-30, the final posture, the uh, brush knee, and really feel where your foot, the angle of the rear foot helps you stand in this posture. If you open it a little bit, then it starts pulling you away. If you bring it in too much, things start collapsing. So that's the feeling you look for and you'll just turn it in as much as you need to. So let's do it one more time and we'll call it a day. Taking it from the top. And I won't say anything, so you can just enjoy the form and begin. Okay, great. So keep practicing and uh, 
there's not that much left. So we'll keep working you through it and uh, stay relaxed. <laughs>